Hello, everybody. Um, thanks for joining me today. This is Haley Gibson. I'm going to go over some strategies that I've used to help clients overcome hypothyroidism today. Um, this is going to be very solution-based. I've already gone over what exactly hypothyroidism is in another video a couple of weeks ago. So that video um, was called Signs of Hypothyroidism, I believe. So if you want to learn more about why hypothyroidism, that would be a great video to watch. So this one's going to touch a little bit on what the thyroid is and how to overcome um, thyroid issues. And I just had a consultation with someone, and I think she's worth mentioning. So she's been struggling with autoimmune thyroid issues since she was 12 years old, and I was able to help her. Um, begin losing weight for the first time. So she's now a little bit older. Um, I'm not going to mention how old she is, but she is in childbearing age. And she, her main complaint was depression, weight gain, inability to lose weight, and just really bad bloating and energy levels. So that's kind of what she was struggling with. So I put her on a program and now, a month later, she's already losing weight. She feels so much better. Her sugar cravings have decreased, and her energy is stable throughout the day. She, she doesn't have that crash in the afternoon anymore, and she just feels so much better. So I'm going to share some of the strategies that I used with her as well as many other clients, and hopefully it will help some of you out there. So thyroid, hypothyroidism is actually one of the fastest rising health conditions in the U.S. Um, the most common symptoms experienced are lethargy, depression, and weight gain. More than 12% of the U.S. population will develop a thyroid condition during their lifetime, with most of these being hypothyroidism. So actually, it's estimated that 27 million Americans have some form of thyroid disease. That is an outrageous number. Up to 60% of those with thyroid disease are not aware and women are five to eight times more likely than men to develop thyroid problems. 80% of hypothyroid conditions in the U.S. are thought to be autoimmune related. So this is a very significant issue. So if you're struggling with weight gain, um, depression, bloating, lethargy, any of those, I highly advise you to stick around and listen to some of these strategies. Um, before we get started, a little bit about myself. I'm a registered nurse as well as functional diagnostic nutritionist. I left the hospital because I wanted to help people overcome their diseases and what caused them to get into the hospital to begin with. I wanted to help them actually reverse those issues once they got home. So I'm very passionate about helping people get to the root cause of their issues. Um, these are just some pictures of my life. I've talked about them before. That's my fiance, and those are some um, running buddies on Kennesaw Mountain. So just a little bit about me. So let's jump into this. So the importance of thyroid. Let's talk a little bit about what exactly the thyroid is. I'm just going to briefly touch on this because we have 18 strategies to go through today. So basically the thyroid sits in your throat and it is responsible for producing hormones that regulate your energy levels, regulate your metabolism is a good way to look at it. So basically, these hormones are secreted from your thyroid gland, and they go to the cells in your body, and they tell them, um, we need more energy, we need less energy, so it will speed it up or slow it down accordingly. So it's very sensitive to even just minor imbalances, and we're going to talk a little bit about that in just a second. Um, it's actually one of the most common areas for people to develop autoimmunity to. Hashimoto's thyroiditis is an autoimmune condition of the thyroid that is considered the most prevalent autoimmune condition. Alrighty. I think it's the next slide, yeah. So, essentially, okay, good, we do get into it. So, this is just going to be very brief. I explain this in more detail in the other video. Um, and I really want to get to those strategies so that you can all take something and apply it to your lives today from this video. But basically, if we have 
um, some kind of adrenal issue related to high amounts of stress, this is going to slow down our thyroid function. If we have slow thyroid function, this slows down our liver and it slows down our gut. Well, if our gut is not eliminating toxins appropriately, if our liver is not eliminating toxins appropriately, they build up in the body and these buildup of toxins exacerbate thyroid and adrenal issues even more. So it's a very vicious cycle and it can become very, very difficult to overcome. A lot of people who are struggling, I mean, they have more than just thyroid issues going on. So there's many areas that we want to support. So this slide is kind of complicated, but I'm going to simplify it for you. So basically, you have hormones floating around in your body, and your body has energy demands. Your brain is able to pick up on the hormone levels and your energy demands. So if you look up at the brain in this picture, it says hypothalamus and TRH up there. So the hypothalamus takes in um, sensory input from the rest of the body, and it can tell, okay, we're low on energy. So I'm going to release thyroid-releasing hormone, and this is going to go down to the pituitary gland. And basically what it does is it tells the pituitary gland, which is the master hormone of the body, to release thyroid-stimulating hormone. This hormone then travels down to the thyroid and tells the thyroid to release thyroid hormone. Thyroid hormone can come in T4 and T3. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about those just briefly. So when thyroid stimulating hormone is released from the pituitary gland, it also activates an enzyme called thyroid peroxidase. And this enzyme combines thyroglobulin, iodine, and hydrogen peroxide to create both T3 and T4, which are the thyroid hormones that I was talking about that come from the thyroid gland. So when this is created, about 93% of the hormone made in the thyroid gland is T4, and about 7% is T3. Well, for those of you familiar with the thyroid, you know that T4 is not actually the active form of thyroid hormone. So T4 actually needs to be converted into T3. T3 is the active hormone. So our thyroid is only producing about 7% of active thyroid hormone. So a lot of times when we have um, hypothyroidism happening in clients or patients, essentially we're having issues with the T4 to T3 conversion. So there's several factors that can contribute to that. This could be liver congestion. This could be due to liver disease, some kind of infection like hep C, um, toxins, heavy metals, nutrient deficiencies. Like if you're missing um, B vitamins or sulfur compounds, you can really have a hard time detoxing. And this can cause liver problems, which can lead to an impaired ability to convert T4 to T3. So basically, you have problems converting into an active thyroid hormone. So another problem is estrogen dominance. So this is when someone has taken in too many exogenous estrogen compounds. So this can be through food, plastics, cosmetics. And this can cause the liver to become sluggish and unable to perform effectively. Um, another issue that we see is high stress. High stress, oh my gosh, the culprit for everything. Um, I think that's enough said about that. I talked more in depth about that in my other video. Um, low selenium and zinc can also drive up reverse T3 levels, which is the compound that stress drives up. And reverse T3 takes away from regular T3. T3 is our active thyroid hormone, and reverse T3 is inactive. So it looks really similar, but it does not do the same thing. So if we're turning everything into reverse T3, basically what our body is doing is reserving its energy. It is in a stressful state, so it takes all of its resources and puts them towards this fight or flight response, our survival mode. And it takes away from energy and it takes away from um, digestion and reproduction. So it can cause lots of issues. Um, another issue 
is gut dysbiosis. So about 20% of the active T3 is actually formed in the gut. So if you have some kind of microbe imbalance, whether it's bacterial or candida, a parasite, whatever it may be, if you're having issues in the gut, you may have issues converting your T4 into your active thyroid hormone T3. So whenever we see these kind of problems, we really want to test and see what's going on. We use the total thyroid report, and we don't just want to know the TSH. Um, we don't just want to know the T4 levels. We want to know it all, what's affecting it. So we look at TSH, and clinical ranges are 0.5 to 5.0. We actually look at an optimal functioning range, which is 0.8 to 2.0. I always like to think of it this way. So clinical ranges, it's like looking at the average American. Personally, I don't want to function like the average American. We're not doing too well. We're a pretty sick nation. So we look at functional ranges, and this is looking at healthy individuals, optimally thriving individuals. What are their thyroid levels? And that is where we get our range from. So 0.8 to 2.0 is what we like to see. And then we also look at the total T4, total T3, free T4, free T3. But in addition, we're looking at other factors. So we look at antibodies, vitamin D, we look at blood sugar regulation, we look at iron, um, T3 uptake, so we can kind of tell is there some estrogen dominance going on. We look at how the liver is detoxing, is the liver congested. We look for um, insulin resistance. You can see C-reactive protein and homocysteine. Basically, we're looking at a lot of factors that influence the thyroid, whether it is nutrient deficiencies or um, hormone dysregulation, you know, et cetera. So these are 12 of the main areas to address for autoimmune disease. And I'm not going to go into depth on these. I'm just going to jump on in to the strategies because I think they're the most important. I do want to talk about industrial pollutants for a moment. So industrial pollutants, what are these? They are found in the air, the water, and they can negatively affect the immune system and thyroid function. So these come from vehicle emissions, industrial chemical waste, chlorine in our water supply, pesticides, herbicides, artificial chemicals, you know, the list goes on and on and on. So we are exposed to so many different chemicals now. So it's important that we are assisting our body in detoxing all of these chemicals. Heavy metals like mercury, lead, and aluminum, these can be found in vaccines, fish, the water supply, old paint, um, mercury fillings, aluminum cans, you know, all sorts of places. Ionizing radiation, so even using microwaves and cell phones, um, mammograms, CT scans. We're also exposed to it when we're flying an airplane. There's just so many sources of toxic exposure today, and our body can handle it, but we just have so much of it, our body can become overwhelmed. Another one is. PFOA, these are dangerous chemicals found in nonstick style pans, so be sure to avoid nonstick pans and especially those that are not labeled as PFOA free. And we have another article about what the best cooking ware to use is. You can find that at drdoctors.com. You can email me at nutrition at drdoctors.com. I'll be happy to send you um, any information that you would like on this stuff. So fluoride is another one. Fluoride is a halogen that competes with iodine, and iodine is really important for making our thyroid hormones. So fluoride competes with iodine uptake in the thyroid, and iodine is needed for the production of those thyroid hormones. So fluoride can be found in tap water, toothpaste, and many processed foods. Bromide is kind of similar to fluoride. It's a halogen, and it also competes for iodine uptake. And it is found in soft drinks and baked goods. Um, inflammatory, inflammatory foods, those can definitely affect thyroid function. So let's just briefly touch on some key nutrients. Iodine, it's 
critical for thyroid function. But if you have autoimmunity, I don't advise using high doses of iodine because you can essentially um, switch over into hyperthyroidism and that can become really dangerous. So I like to have my clients use iodine from um, high quality sea vegetables. So you use kelp, um, dulce, things like that. So kelp is their richest source of iodine. Um, I would definitely use those instead of an iodine supplement. Tyrosine is key for the production of thyroid hormones. So it provides raw material for the formation of the backbone of thyroid hormone. Extremely important. Vitamin A is important. Selenium is the most important when it comes to thyroid function. It is incorporated into key enzymes involved in several pathways that produce your thyroid hormone. Okay. Zinc, vitamin B2, vitamin B6, vitamin C, vitamin E, all of these are so important. So let's talk about the 18 strategies, the useful strategies that you can begin using today. So first and foremost, you have to change your diet. Um, one of the, the biggest part of what I did with the client today as well as many other clients is I changed her diet. So we took her off of gluten. We took her off of sugar and grains. So um, what did her diet look like? We changed it over to using healthy fats. So avocado, coconut oil, um, ghee, which is grass-fed butter with the milk solids removed. And then we also use olive oil. Avocado oil is great. Avocados are fantastic olives. So that's the base of the diet. Those are necessary for good, healthy hormones. And then adding in some good quality protein. So she was vegan. She does not eat meat products. So what we did with her, I did get her to eat fish for dinner sometimes. But most of the time she was using a pea plant-based protein to get her essential amino acids in. And then she was also um, utilizing, um, I'm losing it. What did she use? Those were the main protein sources, her gut healing protein, which is pea plant-based. And then she used a supplement called Amino Strong. So this contains essential amino acids as well. And then the key here is using lots of micronutrient-dense vegetables, so low-starchy, non-starchy vegetables. So even just follow it for 90 days and see how you feel. 90 days isn't going to hurt you to try to do something different. Um, taking out gluten was a big part for her as well. She had autoimmune issues, so taking out gluten, she saw a drastic change in how she was feeling. Um, she dropped nine pounds of water weight within the first two weeks. She was very inflamed. So she's very excited and now it's um, stable. Her weight loss is about a pound or two a week right now. The second most important thing you can do is sleeping about eight to nine hours each night. This is extremely important for thyroid function. Um, for good sleep, you really want to have a dark room. You really want to have um, cold air blowing on you, keep you cool. You sleep better when you're cool. And this also helps rev up your metabolism, helps improve thyroid function. Um, if you can use blackout curtains or if you can go to sleep early enough, you know, go to bed at 9 or 10 o'clock. That way you're rising with the sun around um, 5 to 6 a.m. That would be ideal. So the third one and the fourth one, no, just the third one, we're going to really boost magnesium and B vitamins. Magnesium helps to improve blood sugar signaling patterns and it protects the blood brain barrier. The best magnesium and B vitamin rich foods include dark green leafy vegetables, grass fed dairy, raw cacao, and pumpkin seeds. Pumpkin seeds are loaded with zinc as well, really great for thyroid function. So if you can tolerate these foods, meaning you don't have a sensitivity or you don't have an issue with high oxalates or histamine, then you can consume these on a daily basis. Epsom salt baths are also a great idea. Every night before bed, Epsom salt baths, it's super cheap too. Basically, you get some Epsom, salt bath, um, Epsom salts, you pour them in your bathtub, you fill it up with water, and 
you soak in it for about 15 minutes and this helps increase your magnesium levels so it can help with energy, sleep, bowel movements, and it can also help detox. Yeah. So number four and number five, I paired these together, so reducing stress, absolutely key. So focus on deep breathing. So many times we get caught up in the fast-paced world and we forget to just slow it down and focus on our breathing. Well, when we take deep breaths, we are taking our bodies out of that stress response, so we're reducing stress, and we take ourselves out of our sympathetic response and we switch over into parasympathetic so when our parasympathetic nervous system is on we're promoting digestion we're promoting reproduction health we are promoting really the rest and digest stage that we can't get into whenever we're in a chronic stress response so super important i always whenever i'm feeling overwhelmed or even if i'm not i just need to stop and take 10 deep breaths That's now that takes a minute. Just take 10 deep breaths, recharge, reboost. So number six, use antioxidant-rich herbs. Ginger was life-saving for me. So I actually had hypothyroidism at one point as well, and I didn't even know it. So I had a sluggish bowel as well. This was related to other issues. I didn't really share what... I've gone through, but I had um, five years struggling with bulimia, and I just tore up my digestive system. I wasn't working very well at all. So once I quit, you know, fighting sugar cravings and figuring out how to eat again was only part of the battle. So I couldn't go to the bathroom. I'd go a week without going, and it was absolutely miserable and absolutely painful. And I was scared to death that I would be like that forever. Um, ginger became my best friend. So I would make a green juice with about an inch to an inch and a half of ginger to help my liver juices get flowing, increase my stomach acid, and get my bowels moving. Um, you can use oregano, garlic, basil, thyme, kelp, rosemary. You can add these to dishes, drinks. Um, drink them in tea just all day long. These are so micronutrient dense and we so often forget to use these herbs. Super important. So number seven, test for food sensitivities. For me, I figured out, I didn't test for my food sensitivities, but I figured out I was actually sensitive to dairy because I had been consuming dairy and I was doing everything right. I was using grass fed, eating a healthy diet, high in healthy fats and good proteins and vegetables. And I still was having issues with bowel movements. They had improved, but they still weren't where they needed to be. I could still go like two days without having any progress. Well, I tried taking out dairy and my bowel movements improved within a week and a half. I started going every day. So food sensitivities can definitely cause a barrier to healing. So either get them tested or the way that I did it was I removed the food and then added it back in. And I did that three times. So I took out dairy for two weeks. I'd add it back in and then my constipation would get worse. And then I took it out for two weeks and I added it back in and my constipation would get worse. So to me, that showed me, okay, you're definitely sensitive to dairy. It's happened each time that you've introduced dairy back in. So I just try to stay away from it because I function better when I'm not using it. The other thing, number eight, supplement with omega-3. So omega-3 fatty acids, especially the long chain variety known as EPA and DHA are critical for stabilizing blood sugar they reduce inflammation, and they tame the immune system. So you can find these from grass-fed meat, grass-fed butter, wild-caught fish, and spirulina. Spirulina is amazing, and it is, you know, vegan-friendly. So if you don't consume grass-fed meat and butter and fish, I would definitely look into spirulina. It has a great source of omega-3s. You can also supplement with EPA and DHA, I use Pro EFA from Nordic Naturals, and that has been my favorite. I use the liquid one because it's most cost-effective, 
and Nordic Naturals is very high quality, tested for heavy metals. Um, I really like their Pro EFA, and I take one teaspoon a day. It actually has lemon extract in it. It does not taste fishy, and Dr. Jockers uses this with his um, one and a half year old um, twin boys, and they love it. So, if you complain about a fishy taste, this would be the one to use. Okay, number nine improve mitochondrial function. So, what are the mitochondria? These are the powerhouses in every cell that produce energy. You know, you hear of the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain, those sorts of things. Start thinking mitochondria. So when someone has a thyroid disorder, especially Hashimoto's, which is autoimmune related, it's a clinical sign that they have dysfunction going on in the mitochondria because mitochondria produce energy. The thyroid helps rev up that energy. So supporting your mitochondria with things like CoQ10, L-carnitine, N-acetylcysteine, and lipoic acid. This is a great way to help boost that mitochondrial pathway. Um, we actually use one called Brain Supercharge, and it has clinically effective dosages of each of these nutrients. So that's our go-to that we really like. Boosting up vitamin D. So I do work inside, as most of us do, and I notice that when I'm on the computer a lot and I don't get outside, I just start to get groggy and I get a headache. But the second I go outside, it improves, especially on a sunny day. So be sure to get outside, get some sun exposure. If you can't get sun exposure, at least take a supplement of vitamin D. But honestly, it is not the same as actually feeling the sun on your skin. So I encourage you, get outside, um, feel the nature, and deep breathe out in nature. It just makes such a big difference. If you are like me, then you like to go, 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 and conquer everything and really forget about your health. I find that most of my clients are this way. Basically, this is terrible for you. Make yourself go outside. You will be so much more productive if you make yourself go outside, calm down, feel the sunshine, be in nature, smell the trees, smell the flowers, and then go back to work. It makes a huge difference in how you feel, your energy, and your conversations with other people. It's just very uplifting. So vitamin D, very important. Number 11 is oil pulling. So oil pulling helps to reduce the microbial load in your mouth. It takes stress off the immune system and it reduces inflammation levels throughout the body. So what, how you do this? Basically, you get some coconut oil, unrefined, cold-pressed coconut oil. It should smell like a coconut. And you take a spoonful. I usually like to let it melt, um, so you can either warm it up on the stove or just put it, like, some in a bowl and then put that in warm water. Not so the oil's touching the water. Do you see what I'm saying? There's a separation. So you have your bowl of water that's warm, and then you have your bowl of coconut oil, and you put it in that, and it will melt pretty quickly. So then I like to put it in my mouth and swish it around, and it takes some getting used to for sure, but then you're actually going to spit it out. So you want to do this like twice a day. Once again, if you have any questions about these, I know I'm blowing through them, please email me. We have articles on all of this stuff, and we can really help you perfect your plan for your health. Number 12, get a home water filtration system. Very important. So we talked about chloride, fluoride, pesticides, heavy metals, all of these things. Well, they're in your tap water. I know, it's really unfortunate. So we do recommend getting a home water filtration system. Reverse osmosis is the best. Um, but you definitely want something that is pulling out the heavy metals and the fluoride, the chloride, all of these things. Number 13, we're just moving right along, guys. The low intensity movement. I know a lot of people are like, well, I need to lose weight, so I'm going to go run 20 miles this week. Now, if your body's functioning well, sure, you're probably going to lose weight. But if you're running that much and you're already sick and you're already having some adrenal issues, this is just going to rev up cortisol. And what does cortisol do? The 
this makes you retain water around your midsection. It makes you store more fat, more energy reserves, and it just wears you out. Um, so I don't recommend doing a lot of high intensity movement. But on the flip side, a sedentary lifestyle reduces what is called cerebrospinal fluid flow, and it can lead to increased oxidative stress in the brain. So what do I mean by that? You have cerebrospinal fluid circulating, just like you have lymphatics um, circulating, and basically this helps um, detox your body. You don't want your blood just sitting in the same spot. You really need it to circulate because you bring out healthy, nutritious, oxygen full blood and then it goes through the cells and it gets all the toxins. It removes all the acidic properties and everything from your cells. Well, if it's just sitting there, it accumulates. So we really need to get moving and help get it out of the body. So throughout the day, you want to get a lot of low intensity movement. So walking, light cycling, playing, these are really great. Regular movements will help reduce inflammation and boost the development development of new neurons in the brain so just low intensity movement you know if you have kids play with them um, if you have a dog take them out for a walk you know do the dishes do the laundry do the garden make sure you're moving 14 improving gut motility so we kind of talked a little bit about this but improving the frequency and the consistency is actually is really important for detoxification. Consuming an anti-inflammatory diet with good fiber like chia seed and flax seed, bone broths are really great, fermented foods and probiotics really help improve bowel motility. So some fermented foods that I use on a daily basis, you can use kimchi or sauerkraut. I really like coconut water kavita and I think it's the easiest for me to get in and it's also really tasty. Um, I like Kavita, which is a brand, and I like the lemon cayenne as well as the coconut lime. Both of those are really delicious. Number 15, see a chiropractor. Have a full neurological exam. So if you think about what the spine does, what does it do? It takes the impulses from your brain and it delivers them to your organs. So we really want there to be no interruptions in flow from the brain to your organs. And a lot of us, especially us who work from a desk and we're looking down all the time, we have some issues with flow from our brain to our organs. And it goes the other way too, from our organs to our brain. So how is our thyroid stimulated to begin with? Our brain sensed that we had thyroid needs throughout the body. So it kicked up hormones to help produce thyroid hormone. Well, if we have any kind of issues with our nervous system, we may have issues with stimulating different organs. So seeing a chiropractor is another great thing to do. 16, we're almost there, guys. We're going through 18. Juicing is one of the best ways to get high-quality antioxidants and powerful phytonutrients into your system. So all of the nutrients that I was rambling about earlier, juicing is a great way to get them. Now you don't want to juice a bunch of fruit. Fruits are high in sugar, so this needs to be greens. Um, it needs to be herbs like ginger. You can use um, cucumbers, celery, green leafy vegetables like spinach or Swiss chard, you can use radishes. These are all really good to use and they help stimulate bowel flow. They get the bowels moving and it's also easier for your body to absorb the nutrients. If you have any kind of gut issues, liquid is definitely the best way to go for nutrient absorption. Number 17, we wanna support our liver in detoxification. So individuals with thyroid problems, most of you have a sluggish liver. We talked about that earlier. Your thyroid's responsible for how fast or slow you do things, basically. So if we have a slow thyroid, we have a slow liver most of the time. So supplementing with things like N-acetylcysteine and the alpha lipoic acid and milk thistle can be a really great idea. Milk thistle is awesome for this. And the N-acetylcysteine is an antioxidant and alpha-lipoic acid. 
Um, that was something that you can find in Brain Supercharge. You can find these things on Amazon. Just make sure you're getting good quality supplements that have been thoroughly tested for purity. Um, essential oils. The antioxidant content and aromatherapy benefits of essential oils help to improve oxygenation and reduce the harmful effects of oxidative stress throughout the body. So some of my favorites for thyroid function, lemon, lavender, frankincense, peppermint, these are all really great. So you can do some that are topical and you can rub them on your neck so you can smell them. You can do some that um, you put in a little diffuser and it just diffuses the smell into your home or your workplace. You can put a drop on your hands and mix them together and then cover your nose. And then you can inhale the vapors. So this stimulates your brain and increases blood flow up to your brain. You can also rub them on your skin. Rub them on your thyroid to help reduce inflammation. So those. 18 strategies. This is just a picture of some of the supplements that we use. The Pro EFA, I talked about the fish oil right smack dab in the middle. There's also capsules. The Brain Supercharge over to the right of that, that contains the N acetylcysteine and the alpha lipoic acid, the L carnitine that I was talking about, vitamin D, a good probiotic, which is the probiocharge. And then over to the left, Thyro Liver Protect that has. The selenium, which is really important, and then also has milk thistle. Bone broth protein is just an incredible protein powder to have. And then the high energy support is really great. It supplies your methylated B vitamins, supplies um, a lot of nutrients, a lot of minerals, a lot of vitamins that we need to support healthy thyroid function. So I know that I just briefly touched on a lot of things here. So if you have any questions, please email me at nutrition at drjockers.com. I'd be happy to help explain these things further, some areas that you specifically might want help with. Um, you can contact us. We work with people locally and long distance. We set up consultations, and we believe firmly in educating the public and educating our patients. We don't want to just put people on medications and move on to the next thing, but we want you to understand the disease process and how to overcome it um, naturally or if medications are necessary. You know, we understand, but our goal would be to get you off of them eventually. So we do look over lab evaluations, we offer testing, and we also offer um, customized planning. So I think that's about it for today. I hope you all have a great day. Thank you for joining and God bless.